Greetings ladies and gents, here's the week one update on Roger D's 1935 Buick. First thing on Roger's to-do list was to go ahead and take the glass out of the windshield and out of the rear window. He's doing this for both safety reasons is to go ahead and get it out of the way since the rear window is broke anyway. He also freed up the front vent right in front of the windshield, that now works. Next on the agenda was to remove the bumper, the spare tire carrier, and the gas tank. Still don't know about the gas tank. It's got a big whopping dent in it, but we don't know if it can be used or not. Now it's time to move inside. He went ahead and took the dash out of it so he can go ahead and start working on the woodwork on the floor. Also, he's wanting to check all the structural integrity of the sheet metal and the woodwork in this area and decide what has to be replaced. A previous owner reinforced the doors probably mostly for safety and to prevent sagging and Roger says he's definitely going to have to take this out because he wants to be able to put electric windows on the car. And here he's beginning the long slow process of restoring the woodwork in the car. This initial shot is upside down. This is the template he made out of cardboard. Then here's the actual installation of the piece he replaced. This is an extremely slow and laborious process because not only does he have to cut it to size on length and width, but he also has to plane it down to thickness he needs to match the existing woodwork. I'll take a more detailed look at this in a later video to get into all the hardware he's using to accomplish this. Roger's hoping he can save some of the wood by using this. Uh, it's available on Amazon and it's not cheap. A four ounce bottle is 22 bucks, obviously plus tax and probably shipping. This is originally a product that was aimed at the boating industry when you've got wooden boats and it does definitely firm up the wood as long as it's not totally gone. Basically you inject it in the wood with a syringe and it adds strength to the wood by converting the wood to an epoxy resin based reinforcement. Next on the agenda was to buy a pack of these. They're real good at removing rust that is surface rust, not deep rust, and also stripping paint. And Roger says, yeah, he's definitely going to wind up stripping the whole car with these. Well, on to week two. As you can see here, he did get his rear trunk cover in. Unfortunately, it's for a different model gear, so it's too big. It's got to be cut down. After some inspection and checking, Roger figured he could do his get rock treatment on the door jam here. Results on the next successive video. Now he's continuing on with his woodwork repairs. Note the uh, red prime bracket. We're going to take a look at the other side here in just a second. This is that same bracket from the driver's side. Note that it's basically a piece of rust. Roger said he had to drill out the old screws that were basically rusted in place with the bracket itself without destroying the bracket in the process. Here's another couple shots of that repaired bracket and woodwork on the passenger side. The actual door jam wood here was in pretty good shape, so it didn't require any treatment. Basically just sanding it down and then going ahead and remounting all the hardware on the floor. The floor was where all the degradation was. Here's another shot of that vent opening in just in front of the windshield and Roger says he's got it freed up and working nicely other than painting it's pretty well complete. Next on the agenda was to remove the running boards. A previous owner had fiberglass the top of these and apparently didn't treat too well underneath the fiberglass so it rusted underneath the fiberglass. Now Roger's not even sure he can salvage the running boards here but he's still looking into it. This is going to be a future decision on exactly what to do with these running boards. Here's a couple shots of the driver's door right at the hinge area. As you can see, the degradation at the bottom is pretty bad. Roger's still hoping he can save at least part of this with the get rot treatment. Well, here again, we can take a look at the front suspension on this car. Somebody again did a pretty good little rack and pinion conversion on this thing. It looks like it was done fairly well. It definitely is a power unit. You can see where the hoses are cut. And whoever did it welded it in very nicely. It looks like it was almost professionally done. Roger says he's pretty sure he knows who did it. And the guy that did it definitely knows his stuff. But as you can see, they even notched the frame to get the steering box to work correctly. So yeah, this is pretty good little positive on this car. 
Now on to the radiator, and as you can see here, it did not have a radiator cap, and the hoses, of course, are missing, so it's been sitting for quite a while with uh, the ability to collect water in the bottom of the radiator. It does appear that the radiator is at least period correct as far as construction. The only pause that makes me say it's not original is not all the bolts were installed to mount the radiator. Only two were holding the radiator in place, plus the bottom bolt on the very bottom of it was holding it on. So we're not altogether too sure that this is the original radiator, but it definitely is a period correct radiator, and the patent number is period correct. Is it any good? Well, that remains to be seen. Obviously, we've got to take it out of the car and test it, but right now we haven't done that. While I was over there, I helped him take both the hood and both fenders off of it, but don't all you resto nuts start screaming, save the hood, save the fenders, I want them. He definitely says he's going to put them back on. He just needed to get them out of the way so he could do some more work on the car fairly easily without them being in the way. And as you can see here, it looks stripped down like a roadster right now. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this interesting and useful. If you did, definitely consider giving me a like and keep coming back. I've got a lot more videos coming out on this car and quite a few more videos coming on other subjects I believe you're going to want to see. Till then, y'all, take care. See you on the next video.